Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, let's give God a hand first. Uh, we love to pray. Thank you. Well, good to be here. Last week I was a little off. Today I am just full of joy. I feel the Holy Spirit in here. I feel my brothers and sisters and my family here with me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, let's uh, remember to turn our phones off, or at least down, because when the pastor is preaching, it, it kind of throws us off when we have a phone ring. So, I mean, I know we don't intend to, but just as a reminder. And also, um, I want to say a special welcome, not only to the folks online, but some of the best times in my life were actually in prison. And one of the prisons I was at was, was um, McNeil Island, and... Today, a dear friend of mine who I fellowshiped and worshiped with a lot was able to come, and you'll meet him later. But Bob, I want to welcome you especially. You mean a lot to me, and this is a special day, so thank you. All right, so what do we have? We have church on Saturday, where we all come to, but we also have other things during the week. So I want to tell you a little bit about them. On Sunday nights, or Saturday nights, right here, we have our Redwood Church of God Hispanic Service. So it's right here in the sanctuary at 6.30. So if you have some Spanish friends who want a church, please bring them. This is a family service, so all ages are welcome. Uh, Pastors Miguel and Anna are the leaders, and we welcome you, and we thank you, and we're so glad that you're part of our family. Thank you. Tuesday nights, we have prayer meeting. I can't tell you how important it is. We have some prayer here, but when we're in a circled up as a family and we're praying, it is amazing. Uh, Deaconess Karen isn't here today, uh, but we have at her house on 6 o'clock on Tuesday nights, we have prayer meeting. Come, some of the most amazing spiritual events, I got to say, happen when we get together and we pray. So please, everybody's welcome. On Wednesdays, right here in the sanctuary, we have the Redwood Healing and Deliverance Ministry, 6 o'clock here. All are welcome also. And again, this is an AA. This is for healing for everything whether we have unforgiveness, whether we're angry, whether whatever we're going through, this is what it's all about. So we get together and we work on these things. Thursdays, we actually have two things. We have Thursdays at 1 o'clock, we have the outreach ministry where we get together and we go to um, bus, uh, the, the uh, um, transit centers. Yeah, and just because we've been there. We've been there in the buses. We've been there and we know what it's like to be there and to share and just say hello and to talk to people. Uh, Brother Bill here goes quite a bit. If you have any questions about it, please see Brother Bill. Cricket's been floating around here a little bit, too. She's the one that leads it, so please contact her. And on Thursday nights, we have the Redwood Church of God Bible Study right here in our sanctuary on Thursday nights at 6. So the pastor's going to come in and lead it. So if you love his preaching and today looks like a doozy, I can't wait, please come on Thursdays as well and have some one-on-one -on -one time with the pastor. Okay, that's our weekly events. Now I want to talk about our Redwood Retreat 2023. I got to admit, I'm still a little disappointed that we weren't able to make it for whatever reason. I know it was the buses, but the Lord had something else in mind. So we're going to make it the third annual anniversary and retreat in the Redwoods, April 21st to April 24th, 2023. Now we only have $1,351 left to go. As you can see on our thermometer back there, that little bitty white space, that's all we have left to go to meet our goal of $16,000. So please help us. This is time for car washes. We have car wash tickets available. You can get 10 tickets. You don't have to pay anything for them. And we ask donations for them to help us build our goal. We're really close. Also, any donations can be made directly to the church as well to, for this. Um, see Deaconess Didi in the back there if you want to pack of tickets. Now I have some bad news. I've been telling you that we've been selling our tickets for 10 bucks and they're 12 bucks at the car wash. Well, now the new tickets are $12. So we can do it though. I mean, it's $12 if you go there, it's $12 to us and you're helping helping out a church. So don't be afraid to get a pack of 10. And if you do sell some, um, you sell a couple in a week, be sure and get the money into Didi so we can keep track of it on our, on our goal. So thank you for your help. Thank you for everybody that's helped because each week it goes down. So thank you. Um, let's see, we only have $1,300 to go, 90% of our goal. So, uh, TD can is TD. Um, we also have, if you're going to go, and if you haven't signed up yet, you can sign up in the back with Deacon is TD, put your shirt size on there, and also we need to register online or with a piece of paper back there, but if you visit our website, redwoodchurchofgod.org, there's a registration on there. Just fill that out real quick. That actually registers with the place we're going. Maybe next week we can watch the video and look at it again, but, uh, this will get you officially registered. You'll have a confirmation email, 
And also, don't forget prayer requests. We get together on Tuesdays, as you well know. We want prayer requests. Don't be shy. Don't think that, well, I don't deserve to be prayed for. We want to pray for you. We want to know if there's something that you need prayer for. Maybe your mother's going through something like we had earlier, or your father or your children. So please, it's on our Redwood Church of God website. Fill out the prayer request. It'll be printed out, and we'll pray about it on Tuesday. And there it is right there. Bam. I almost forgot. So this is a wonderful website. We've got new pictures on there as well. And every time we have an event, we put some pictures up on there. We've got a barbecue coming up on Monday. You guys excited about that? This is our Labor Day barbecue to celebrate our third anniversary of Redwood Ministries. This is the, see the, the pictures. Look at that. I mean, this is so neat. It, it warms me. I, I look on there. I go on there from time to time, and I look at the pictures, and it just I just love seeing you guys. You know, I don't get to see you all week until, until Saturday, but there you are right there on the website. Oh, it's me. Hey, Jason. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so set Monday at our house, the first John house right here in Des Moines. If you haven't got the address, if you haven't got the address yet and you weren't there on the 4th, please see Brother Chuck, Brother Jack, myself, um, and Brother Miles, too. Any of us, grab us. We'll get you the address, and we want to see you there. You can, you can show up anytime you want. We, we recommend around 11-ish because we'll start cooking at 12. So you'll get a seat, and, and whatever happens, we'll, we'll have some fun. Um, here's what it says. Our third anniversary of Redwood Housing Ministry and Barbecue and Fellowship at the First John House. All are invited to attend, including friends and family. But remember, please, it's adults only. On our menu, barbecue hamburgers, hot dogs, and chicken, chips, and beverages. You are encouraged to bring side dishes, desserts, or whatever you want. To see Brother Jack Stewart with your questions, and he's, you know him back there with the hat on and the striped shirt. Um, and thank you to Chef Neil Nutter. He's right back here. He's going to be our chef. He's going to be slinging hot dogs and hamburgers. So thank you, Chef Neil. And then this will be a time of celebration, breaking of bread and fellowship. Everything is set and ready to go. And a special thank you to Brother Chuck in coordinating this event. He has done a lot of work. So thank you, Brother Chuck. So, yeah, arrive at 11-ish, starts cooking around 12. The address for me, Chuck, uh, Miles, or, or Jack. Um, and church membership. If you come, you're one of us. That's, that's all it takes to be one of us is just to show up. But we'd also like to give you a nice little certificate. I forgot which that was. A sporty pin. Nice little pin. And we want to recognize you in, in front of the congregation to say welcome and make you an official member. So if you haven't done it and you're thinking about it, uh, we have a sign-up sheet. Deaconess Didi has it right back there, and we'd love to have you as a, as a, as a permanent member. Um, it says, please sign up as a member of Redwood Church of God, making us your church home. We love you. Please see Sister Sarah or Sister Didi or Deaconess Didi, and they have the sign-up list. Water baptism. Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Redwood Church of God is a portable baptismal, so everyone can be baptized right here in our sanctuary. Sister Dee Dee, again, has the sign-up sheet in the back. Again, don't be shy. If you've made a life-changing decision, I got baptized when I was eight years old. I was baptized LDS. But about 15, I took a side trip, and I didn't come back until my, my mid-30s. So by the time I was my late 40s, I decided I needed to recommit because I don't ever want to leave God. I don't ever want to leave this. I don't ever want to be separate from God again of my own choosing. So I got rebaptized. Several of us have been rebaptized. Don't be shy. Just because you were baptized as a child, it's, it's not saying you're not going to go to heaven if you get rebaptized, but it's an outward symbol, and we can celebrate your dedication to the Lord. So please sign up there. Um, we'd like to have another celebration here real soon, so don't be shy. Benevolent fund activity. There's a lot of red on here, and there's a lot of odd numbers. I, I'm, I'm really disturbed. I was sitting out there earlier looking at the numbers, and the fact that his red wasn't bad enough, did you see it was a penny? A penny! One Okay, so let me go over this. On 827, we had a beginning balance of negative 132.70. We had quite a bunch of offerings. Thank you very much of $415.53. 53 cents. Uh, I'll claim that one. I did it. I did it. I wanted to throw it off a little bit. And on the third, we had $200 in rental assistance, $290.84. Somebody's messing with me. How do you get 84 cents in moving expenses? Uh, but I believe you. I'm not calling anybody. I'm just saying they're messing with me. 
So take 490, uh, 84 off the total. So we're down to a benevolent fund balance of negative two hundred and eight dollars and one cent. I can't live with that. I don't know about you guys, but that really bugs me. So thank you everybody for donating. I mean, four hundred bucks in one week. Wow. And I know this is hard. This is hard. Every every week gets more and more expensive. Every week I get less and less groceries for my money. So thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Again, this is for emergencies. This is if, you know, we find out we're in a world of hurt and we need a little help. That's what our emergency fund for. Because, again, it doesn't have any overhead. It goes into a special account and we use it for each other for our emergencies. Um, so thank you for that. Now, I'm done. I thank you for your time. I do want to mention something, though. We don't have a birthday scheduled for the next three weeks. I mean, look at this body. I'm going to disappear if I don't have cake. If you have a birthday, <laughs> seriously, look at this. I mean... Don't say pear is not a shape, because I'm in shape. Deaconess Dee Dee and Deaconess Karen, we want to know when your birthdays are, because again, it's not about you, it's about me. I need cake, and we love you, and we want to celebrate your day. So don't think that, oh, I don't want to make anybody make a fuss. You're going to make me cry. Please let them know when your birthday are, so we can come around and we can sing to you and give you a little bit of the love that you deserve, and we want to celebrate your birthday. We want to, so don't be shy. But today we don't have one, and we don't have a Deaconess Karen but we have a Deacon Miles. We're very happy to say Brother Miles. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jason. It's awesome to see how God moves in a congregation, right? He tells us that he will give us a new heart and a new spirit within us. He'll take out that heart of stone out of our flesh, and he'll give us a heart of flesh. He'll put his spirit within us, and he will cause us to walk in his statutes, and we'll keep his judgments, and we'll do them. And when we do that, we'll dwell in the land that he gave to our fathers, and we shall be a people, and he will be our God. Isn't that awesome? We've got a God who loves us, who wants us to walk in his ways. He wants us to have that joy. When he's dwelling within us is the fullness of joy. You can have trouble and storms and things going around you, but you're still at peace. You're still joyful. You're still happy when the world is looking at you going... And you're just like, okay, so you're having a bad day. How can I pray for you? How can I help you? That's what they want. They just don't know it yet. Amen? So now is a time where we bring the tithes and offerings. The offering to the Lord, the God that loves us, the one who has watched over us in the middle of our storms and our trials. And I was praying about this before I came up, and... and um, he gave me two things out of Proverbs 3. It says, Honor the Lord with your possessions, verse 9, and with the first fruits of all your increase, verse 10, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. We want that new wine of the Holy Spirit. We want His presence. We want nothing to restrain Him from us. Let not our inequities hinder Him. Amen? So as we have an opportunity to bring an offering before the Lord, verse 3, or uh, chapter 3, verse 27, do not withhold good from them, those whom it is due. Benevolence fund. You can take some of your tithe and direct it towards the benevolence fund if you want. Just know that you can. I do that as often as he puts it on my heart. That's where it's got to go. Because as you're prayerfully considering with what he gave you, It'll go to where there's need. Because in the book of Acts, when the church first started and the Holy Spirit was rolled out, nobody had anything of lack. Those that had much shared it with those who had little. And everybody had what they needed. That's the whole purpose of it. So do not withhold good from those whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do so. Verse 28 of chapter 3. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back tomorrow, and I will give it when you have it with you. Amen? So as we have this opportunity to bring forth our tithes and offerings, now is the time. Open your heart, pray about it, and give to the Lord. Amen? Pastor Lay, I know you've got a song. Amen? So it is time to worship the Lord. It's time to honor Him with our first fruits. Let's Amen? sing our theme song. <laughs> We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of
sacrifice your praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifice. Says of joy. Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand clap. Amen. Thank you. So all of you stretch your hands forward as we pray together over this offering. First of all, I want to say the Lord is well pleased with your giving. And uh, it's a blessing. For the Lord says he loves a cheerful giver. And he says if there's one thing you can test him on, it's your giving. Amen. 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 So uh, the Lord sees everything. He sees our hearts. He knows exactly, exactly where we're at. And, you know, we give because we love God and because we obey Him. Amen. Amen. So pray with me. So, Father, we just uh, put our hands on this offering right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you to cast your eyes upon your people as they gave willingly in a cheerful heart, O oh God, in obedience and out of love to you. And we know that you are a God who honors your word. And we say thank you for being our provider, for providing every single thing when we need it. You know just how much to give. You know just what we need exactly. And we just... Um, Submit our lives to you and say we obey you, we love you, and we ask you to, to accept this offering now and that you would give the church leadership wisdom and understanding um, on how to direct the finances of the church. And we ask that you just multiply uh, these finances and multiply the blessings for your people. Bless the ones that have brought forward this offering, Lord, and bless the ones who wanted to but maybe didn't have anything to give. We lift us all up together, and we say thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, and we can all say amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Miles. Amen. You did wonderful. Welcome to the Redwood Church of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is in the house. Hallelujah. Pastor Leo, you did a fantastic job this morning in praise and worship. It was wonderful to be under the anointing. Sister Linda, thank you for being such an incredible intercessor and in bringing forth the prayers. Uh, Sister Danielle, thank you for opening us up in prayer. And Doug, thank you for, and Miles, thank you all for putting this all together so it works. Amen? Amen? Go ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. The Redwood Church of God, where Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. Amen? And we honor God in relationship and we honor each other in Christ-like relationships. Amen? Uh, who's here for the very first time? Never been here before? Raise your hands. Okay. Hallelujah. Um, Brother Jack is going to bring you a microphone, and uh, we would like you to stand up and just let everyone know what your name is, uh, where, you, where you came from, and how you happen to hear about the Redwood Church of God. My name is John Clancy. Um, did you turn on the mic? Yep. Okay, go ahead, try it again. My name is Sean Clancy. It's being recorded, and so it doesn't get on the video. Go ahead. Is that better? Yeah. Much better. Yeah. My name is Sean Clancy. Um, actually, Pastor Valetta and I, about 20 years ago, used to work in the chapel of Shelton together. And James and I were, I mean, Jack, uh, Jason. Oh, Jason. And I were uh, together in a couple different spots. And uh, he's a good brother. He's something that meant a lot to me in my life. And so he asked me to come and check this church out. And I've been looking for a home for a while. And he uh, asked me to come and 
give it a shot. So, Amen. I'm here. Uh, Sean, 20 years ago, uh, 20 years ago. You left about 2005? Yeah, something like that. But we met in 2003, I believe. So welcome. God bless you. I'm so glad you're here. Amen. Give a welcome. And who's our distinguished guest back here? Could you stand up and uh, introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Guy. I, um, if you guys meet told me about the church, uh, again, I'm looking for uh, uh, a good, strong church. And I um, came with uh, my mom. She went here. She's been oh, here before. Okay. Yes, I recognize her. Um, and hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are so welcome here. We're so happy that you're here. And your mom's name was Joanne? Joanne. Joanne. Give them the more. I welcome you guys. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to go right into our uh, communion service. And uh, if you want to turn your Bibles, we're going to start today with Matthew chapter 27. Uh, I'm going to read from um, verse 38, if you want to follow in your word. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him. Do you imagine that? Our Lord hanging on the cross and he's being blasphemed, wagging their heads and saying, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking him with the scribes and the elders said, he saved others himself, he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Verse 45. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over the land. That's from noon to 3 p.m. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabatini, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Here, was a point where Jesus carried the burden of all of humanity's sin and caused for the very first time separation between him and the Father. You know, we talk a lot about unity and oneness and how important and how wonderful it is because um, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are perfectly united in one. And here for the first time, Jesus, due to the fact that he was bearing all of humanity's sin and taking the punishment for our sin. You know, even when he was hanging on the cross, we had those wagging their heads, blaspheming and um, mocking our beautiful Lord and Savior, who was the innocent Lamb of God. He never sinned once. The reason why they hated him is because he spoke the truth. And the truth exposed the lies. And, you know, if, if you're living a lie, it means you're living in darkness. And you don't want to come out of that darkness because you're exposed. And that's what Jesus did. Verse 47, some of those who stood there, when they heard that, said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him, still mocking. 
And here, listen to this. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded his spirit. He yielded. What happened? The Bible says, then behold, behold, receive this. The veil of the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. And the earth quaked and the rocks were split. This was the most momentous time in all of time. It reset time. Have you ever heard of BC? Have you ever heard of AD? Well, what's in the middle? Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so, today we're celebrating as a memorial service to our Lord and Master and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Also, to all of you who are saved and are children of God. Also, to our bridegroom. We are betrothed to the Lord Jesus. We are set apart for his use. We belong to him. We don't belong to ourselves. We separate ourselves from this world. And we live our lives for the glory of God. We've accepted and we've confessed and we received the Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts and announced to the world through baptism, through our confession, that he is our Lord and Savior. That we identify with his death, burial, and resurrection and we're born again and we're alive in the spirit and dead to the flesh. Jesus did that for us. So we don't, we're, we're not to forget that. We're to, to memorialize that wonderful, wonderful thing that Jesus did and the suffering that he endured for you because of the great love that he has for you and for all of us, his bride. The bridegroom sacrificed his life for his bride. No greater love than this, and a man would lay down his life for another. And so we live in this world. Stop flirting with it. Stop cheating on Jesus. You're married. You belong. You are set aside. We are to pre be presented him pure and holy, without spot or wrinkle. And when we do, we have the blood of Christ. But where's our head? Where's our heart? There's things going on out there. Do not touch any unclean things, says the Lord. Come out from among them and be ye separate. And then he'll receive us unto himself. Have you ever heard of the word no? <laughs> no. There's nothing more powerful than a made-up mind and made-up heart and the power of the Holy Spirit indwelling within us. There's nothing that we cannot overcome regarding sin. Thank you, Lord, for our free will. We willfully choose you. And we thank you. We are grateful for eternal life. But not, let us not lose sight. What's, I don't know if there's anything above eternal life, but along with eternal life, know this. That through the blood of Jesus Christ, we were restored back in fellowship with the Father. When he sees, when the Father looks upon us, he sees his Son and his righteousness, because our righteousness is like filthy rags. Thank you. God is so holy. He's so pure. He's so righteous.
that no darkness can even come into his presence. It's not permitted. It wouldn't survive. It wouldn't last. It would just be obliterated. But we can come. We can come into his presence. His presence was here and is here. I don't know about you all, but I was blessed during praise and worship and through prayer and through this whole service. God has a way of revealing himself when he's well pleased. He encourages us. He longs for us. He says, I go away, but I'm coming back. But while I'm away, I'm going to prepare a place for my bride. It's my father's house. There's many mansions. If it weren't so, I wouldn't tell you so. Our bridegroom is busy at work preparing a place for us. And it's going to be beyond, be beyond whatever we could ever think or expect. <laughs> totally, just like, a, just like a wonderful bridegroom, he's going to sweep his bride right off their feet. So today, we're going to go back 2,000 whatever years, back to the day where Jesus laid down his life for us. And we're going to do a memorial service in remembering him. However, before we go forward, let's take a moment, just a moment or two while we're fumbling around with our cups. Just take a moment to reflect upon how we're living our lives. Is there anything that you haven't confessed and repented from? Now's the time to do that. Well, how do you repent, Pastor James? By coming in agreement with God and admitting that your sin is sinned against the most holy God and that you repent, you turn your back from that sin, you walk away from it, and you say, I agree with you, God. I don't agree with sin. I hate it. I see what it does to me. It separates me from you. And by confessing the blood of Jesus Christ over ourselves through that process, it brings us back into perfect fellowship with him. Because sin will separate us in relationship. We want to walk with God. We want to be with God. We want to be hearing him. We want to have fellowship with God. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, we can do that. So, going to the book of 1 Corinthians. By the way, I want to add, if you're not a Christian, don't partake. This is for believers. You don't want to um, take damnation unto yourself. Amen? For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And we had given thanks. We thank you, God. We thank you. He broke it and said, and we'll do this together. Take Eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We remember. Thank you for your sacrifice, bridegroom. Let's take it. Going on in verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after saying, This cup is the new covenant. Do you know we're not under the law? We're under grace. This cup is the new covenant, and he made this covenant in his blood. This do, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
Is there anyone struggling getting their eyes open? We, we want to do this together. Our deacons will help you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. COVID's even changed the way we take communion. Are we good? Okay. I'll, I'll read that verse again. This cup is in the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We remember you and your death and the pouring out of your blood for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Hold up just a second. We're family. Amen? We're the family of God. And we do godly things together. We celebrate together. No one is left out in the kingdom of God. Not one. And have I told you guys how much I love you? I love you all so very much. I don't want to ever forget to say that. Joanne, you okay? Okay. So let us drink together. Hallelujah. And it says in the Bible, after they celebrated the, the, the meal, the Last Supper, they sang a hymn. Amen. So we're going to do it in the tradition oh, that Jesus did. Let's sing a thousand hallelujahs. Amen. Wills would rocks cry out to worship Whose glory thought the stars to shine Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing But this joy is mine. With a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the glory, the honor and the praise. Lord, yes, one, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs in a time and more Wills will die for our redemption This resurrection means our rights Peace and line enough to sing of all you do But I have eternity to try with a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the glory, the honor and the praise. No dares when this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. Praise his name.
Thank you, Pastor Leah. That was beautiful. A thousand hallelujahs. If I counted to three, can we all say hallelujah at one time? Can we do that? Ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! <laughs> I won't ask you to do it a thousand times. Okay. Father, we just ask you now as we open up your word. Holy Spirit, we ask that you be our teacher and that you would speak through me to your people and that you'd open up the hearts of your people, Lord God, uh, to revelations and understandings. And may you have your way in our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. 